What's up, everybody? Chewy89 coming at you today with this time a panel to play. And this is unexpected, by the way. We're getting the Ancient One panel to play. And what's interesting about this panel to play, and I've not done this in the past, we do get the Ancient Ones card. And I've kind of read it. Not really. I'm going to get into it right now. This is insane. Maybe this is a new way to do panel to play. This makes a lot of sense. That way you're not doing uh, you're not doing a panel to play, then showing the card like a week later. You're doing it all in one shot. You might as well just do the whole thing. The other thing is, too, with some of the pen of the plays, some of the wording in there gets a little weird. Um, but I wonder if they're going to change Blade's pen of the play. They might just show the card next week to say, okay, whatever. But we'll see. All right, guys. So we got the ancient one here. Um, this just gets into the past with her. Uh, I've been feeling very young for a very long time. Today, I'm a pen of the play. We're examining someone as old. That when she walked into an ancient antique shop, they tried to sell her. <laughs> the mystic monk from the 1200s, the ancient one. Oh, that's right. The ancient one is old. Yeah, well, it's the name, the ancient one. The ancient one is a native of uh, Kamar Taj, uh, who has defended Earth from mythical mystical threats for millennia. As the sorcerer supreme, she has trained countless acolytes who found their way to Kamar Taj and the mystic arts, including her own successor, the famous neurosurgeon Stephen Strange. That's absolutely correct. That's Doctor Strange, the one of the best, probably the best magical user in Marvel. Uh, with the Mystic Arts and all that stuff. Anyways, so as you might expect from someone who's been around since the 1200s, the Ancient One has a few tricks up her sleeve. Displaying her magical magistry with almost casual ease, the Ancient One has potent Mystic Attacks and a bevy of defensive options. Hmm. More Mystic Attacks on the way. Wakanda, your days are numbered. Anyway. <laughs> Along with the web boards, your days are numbered. As you might expect from someone who's been around since the 1200s, the Ancient One has a few tricks up her sleeve, displaying her magical mastery with almost casual ease. The Ancient One has potent mystic attacks and a bevy of defensive options. Her two core attacks that cost no power to use, Shards of the Seraphim and Fangs of Feralaw, allow the Ancient One to tailor her strike to her prone's weaknesses. Whether calling down the keen shards to pierce through an enemy's defenses or summoning the Maw of Feralaw of the Hunt to rob them of their power, these attacks both have respectable strength. But the Ancient One doesn't need to rely on the physical strength of her spells to damage her opponents when facing her same foes. She can strike the spirits of their astral sleeves rather than their mere bodies. Astral Strike costs her four power and strikes at strength eight. Ooh, nice. But because she's bypassing the target physical self, it cannot add criticals to the defense roll or roll extra dice produced by criticals. Damn, that sucks. Ooh, this attack's going to be dangerous. If she damages the target, it becomes staggered from the experience of having... It's spirited, it's spirit knocked around. The Ancient One has, also has a potent mixture of spells and innate talents. She can rely on her battles. She can summon the Mists of Horvath to act as a portal, allowing her to appear within a close range. Ooh, that's nice. She can teleport. She has strong physical attacks. She has some defense shenanigans. She can also affect, like, your critical results. Jeez. <laughs> this is going to be crazy. The cause of Blast of Air to fling an attack to within range where her martial arts experience can help her defend herself. She has martial artists. All right, let's get into the card here. So she's going to be health six. This is, by the way, this is genius, by the way. They, they should be. They should have done this from the get-go uh, when they're doing the panel to plays. Just reveal the card already. Don't wait a week for us to reveal. Just get into the description, show us the card, and be done with it. And that this is this is smart. I like they're doing this. This is a great decision. Uh, I'm glad they're doing it now rather than like 10 years from now or whatever. So... So, 6 health, moves medium, size 2, threat 4. Good. Um, so, it looks like there's no affiliation. So, I'm thinking maybe Doctor Strange might still be a threat 5. I don't know. Um, we'll have to see. Um, defense 2 for physical, 3 for energy, and then 5 for psychic, which is expected. Um, she's really good with uh, psychic stuff and all that. Uh, range 2, her builder. Uh, Shards of Seraphim, range 2 attack. 5, uh, five. Five dice, no power cost. After this attack is resolved, the character gains power even with damage dealt and has a pierce. That's good. Really good. Really, 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 really good. You guys want to start countering Wakanda? Play the Ancient One. Fangs of Faralaw. Uh, another free attack here. So um, it's range three, four power, no cost. After this attack is resolved, this character gains power. Thank you. Thank you. Can we make this a trend? Okay, this makes sense to me. Gaining a power. Or range three attack that's four dice is is smart to me it makes a lot of sense it does really well um and you know it just makes sense to me when they when they do the four die builders and it says to equal to damage dealt 
Never been a fan of that. Never will be a fan of that. I think it sucks. This is good. I like this. So if the attack deals damage, after the attack is resolved, the target ooh gains poison. I'm a fan. Poison is can man, it sneaks up on you, man. Especially for teams that are like power hungry, like web warriors. You know, uh, Wakanda can have some problems getting some power if they have poison stuff like that too. So this is gonna be, this is good. And then we get to the big spender, Astral Strike, range two. So funny, the ranges here are two, three, two. So no range four attack. So it looks like the ancient ones want, you know, has wants to get some distance or wants to be right in your face, right? With range two. So this is interesting. So Astral Strike, range two, uh, eight, uh, eight dice, four power cost. The defending character does not add crit result and its defense rule to its total successes and cannot add additional dice. This is basically similar to Vision Synthesoid Avenger. This is devastating. This is really, really devastating. This should be KOing a motto, probably. Uh, the fact that, you, I mean, if you roll a crit, you don't get it as a block success and you can't add dice, uh, you can't add additional dice for the crits. Like, you can't do it. So, this is, this is amazing. If the attack deals damage after the attack is resolved, the target character gains the stagger special condition. Stagger sucks as well. Um, you know, it, losing an activation really, really, really hurts, especially late in the game when you need to do something, you need to pull something off, you need that extra move, you need that extra attack, and you can't do it. Stagger is is a game changer. So that's really, really good. Really great spender. I'm, I will be using this a lot once I get in range and all that. So let's see what she does uh, with superpowers. So Mist of Holgarth place this character within two of its current position. The super can only be used once per turn. So similar to Body Slide, what a uh, cable has. Um, really cool. So she should be getting into the fight with no problem here. Uh, Winds of Watoon. When this character is targeted by an attack, it may use this superpower. Push the attacking character. Now this is interesting. So once you target me for an attack, I get to push you towards me small. That's amazing. So this is going to get the ancient one within range two of you really fast, right? So every, I mean, if you target her, she spends three power, boom. You're, I'm gonna push you small, now I'm closer to you. Maybe I can get you within range two so I can do my Shards of Seraphim or my Astral Strike. That's really cool, really, really cool. Uh, Keeper of the Eye of Agamotto. Uh, when this character is making a defense dodge, hold on a second guys, sorry. Um, when this character is making defense or dodge roll, it may reroll up to two of its defense dice or dodge dice. So every time you make a defense or dodge roll, so basically, this is almost similar to I have Amagato, but I have Amagato's roll all was roll all your dice, and you can add failures to it. This does not do that. So additionally, during the power phase, this character gains one additional power. So she's gaining two power a turn, right? The ancient one is getting two power a turn. Um. Also has martial artists, so if you're within range two, I was hoping it would give the ancient one master martial arts, but I think it'd be too good. <laughs> I think that'd be too good for the ancient one. Um, so as long as you get within range two, you can add blanks to your total successes for defense dice. So, so the ancient one can be tanky, and you have rerolls, right, on defense and dodge rolls. So ancient one should be in the fight a long time and dazing some characters and like doing and doing some stuff. So. Hold on, guys. Sorry. Anyway, so we get to the injured side. Uh, I don't think anything changes here. Health stays the same. Defense dice stay the same. The superpowers all stay the same. Really solid character and really unexpected. Did not think we were going to get this today on a Friday. I'm happy. I hope this is the trend going forward. I think next week will probably be maybe a Dormammu reveal because Dormammu, rumor has it, was is supposed to come out in August along with Blade and Moon Knight. We should be getting Blades card next week, but I'm hoping a panel to play with Dormammu is just like this. Um, and of course, they talk about Dormammu and the rest and stuff here. Um, it's just whatever's on the card. But yeah, this is a this is a really good card. Um, the Ancient One is going to be a, a hell of a threat in the game, as the Ancient One should be. Um, really, really good stuff. Um, I like everything I see here. All Mystic Attack. So I mean, this is a Wakandan's nightmare right now. <laughs> This is definitely a nightmare for them. Um, this is this is sick, and I like everything I see here. Anyways, guys, thank you guys for watching. Uh, let me know your thoughts about the ancient one down below. Comment down below. Like, dislike the video. Subscribe to my channel for more MCP content. 
um also in the description down below i will have a link to my episode of the fifth episode of the mega level third podcast um on that episode we have um we have a fast nick who plays top 16 with the x-men you definitely want to watch that and uh hear his thoughts on his roster building also if you guys can uh we do have a tournament coming up called second wind uh you can sign up on long shanks right here um that is october 23rd and the 24th uh, of this year it's a two-day event run by vincent kirkhoff and the crew down there in chicago um i've been there for two years i went in 2018 2019 i was sad to not get one in 2020 you know with everything going on um and right now it's stacking up right now we got 23 players that are going to be playing in this event at this point in time i need to sign up at some point otherwise i'm not gonna get a spot here um so yeah you just go to longshanks.org look look for marvel crisis protocol look for second win three and uh yeah just follow the instructions here to sign up for this event and uh you know you're gonna have a great time guys trust me anyways guys thank you very much like i said like dislike comment down below subscribe to the channel We'll have some more content. Take care. Have a wonderful day.